So the first thing I do is I spray glue the area here for the insert, right, right there. Okay, you don't hear any air because I'm not really spraying glue right now because I already did. That's why you don't hear the compressed air coming out of the gun. So anyway, you do that side on the foam side and then also you do spray glue on the cover side. So, we got to wait a few minutes and then we'll put that together. Earlier I thought I was recording when I wasn't recording. So anyway, what I did is I set the material down. This is where I set first, the front right here. And then I set the sides. Right here. And right here because earlier I had after I set the first side the second side the, the pleats were curved because there was no tension so what I did is I pulled that out so that way we have some straight pleats now so you got to make sure that your pleats are straight so if your pleats are not straight people would be talking about it for years to come and you don't want that that would be bad so this is what you really end up with here when you're you're all done with that so I'm gonna let these dry probably about a good two days let that glue dry up before I move on to do the assembly I don't want this stuff to come apart on me later. Okay, so now that we have the cushion and the cover made it together like that, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and attach everything to the seat frame here. The way this gets installed is there are metal seat clips that go over the seat frame here to attach the material to the seat frame. But um, the technique that I'm going to use is tech number technique number 5455 okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue around the perimeter of the frame as well as on the seat cover here so that way um, I can set the cover on the frame before I put those seat clips uh, which will end up with a much nicer finish than if I just did the seat clips alone because um, if I just did the seat clips alone there's a chance of, of like a wave effect all the way around, which I don't want. I, don't, I want it to be even all the way around. You know, I just decided I'm going to do something else. I don't want this foam pad floating around on the top like this. There's nothing to like really set it in place. So I'm going to go ahead and glue, glue this foam pad onto the frame. Okay, now that I got both sides glued up, we're going to go ahead and set it back on there again. Make sure it's where it belongs. sit down on the frame by the way there is a left and right cover a driver passenger seat I guess driver if you're here in the US it's on the left side so if you notice that here there's a wide panel here there's a narrow panel the narrow panel goes on the inside where the gear shift is and you'll also know driver because of this tab right here the driver side has the tab what we'll do now is we'll set these corners so what you do is you put your flat hand this is technique number 333 so you put your flat hand you hold down that corner with your flat hand then you roll it over like that so we got a welt here and you can see the little kink right here that means that the welt is turned so 
all the weld has to be facing the same direction on the back side so just kind of straighten it out like that still there might have to use some heat oh that's much better stretch it out a little bit okay so that's one corner same thing on the other corner what I mean by welt is turned is this right here this edge when it goes down it should all be facing the same direction but sometimes if you're not paying attention it'll fold under like this and it'll look weird on the top so it's always best to have it all go in the same direction just like that and then fold it over what you'll almost always see is you'll see these wrinkles go in this direction here so on bottom seat covers so what that means that we have to pull it opposite that wrinkle which is technique number 342 it's one of the most important ones is how to know how to pull out a wrinkle so what you do is you grab this back corner here and you pull that one out pull it towards the back and set just like that and we'll do the same to the other side pull it to the rear make sure your welt is turned pull it to the rear set roll it over just like that okay we'll flip it over we'll set all the way around what I'll do is I'll cut like a U shape around the seat frame here Okay, so that's down nicely. Okay, I can see here that I have a little extra material here. That's creating this big wrinkle. Got that much, too much material. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to put some heat on here to get it to conform, I guess. And uh, I'll reset this. So this is the kind of thing that you get when you buy a seat kit it's pretty common um, if I would have made the patterns for this seat cover custom um, I wouldn't have had that extra material there that means that the angle right here when they made the pattern is wrong um, I know that this here came from England and it's supposed to be correct and all that uh, but it's still a seat kit the pattern is wrong the only reason I know it's wrong is because we have all this extra material here if the pattern was cut correctly you wouldn't have these wrinkles so anyway it's a seat kit and most people are going to be buying the seat kit so this is what you do we're going to heat it up so we got it nice and warm so now we got to try to pull these wrinkles out what that means is if there's wrinkles that there's extra material that doesn't belong there and you can see even after I did the stretch the the extra material still shows up here on the on this side but it won't show on this side right away that this corner here is correct right there's no wrinkles that's the way it should be on the pattern so these are the C clips I call them and this is what's really going to tie it down this would tied them down originally but you can see now that I glued it on there how, how nice and easy and simple and um, a much nicer outcome so what we'll do now is we'll take the C-clips
push them on like that. And I'll do this all the way around. There's a couple different ways of cutting out the holes here for the seat bolts. Um, the most natural way I guess would be to take your scissors out like this and cut the hole. Not wanting to cut it too big so now you have access to your hole. Or you can use my technique number 3458 and what you can do is you can take a hammer like this and if you hit the edge look what happens this is something that you come up with after 40 years of experience you know, stuff like that anyway I hope that'd be nice to know if maybe somebody used that technique in the future so now, I guess we're pretty much done with the bottom cushion. We'll move on. I'll go ahead and do the next one. I'm not going to bore you guys with that. Installing the next one. I'm just going to be doing the same thing you just saw. And then we'll move on to the backrest. The backrests are going to be a lot bigger deal. I'm going to point this out. This is a good lesson on assumptions. I was noticing that when I was... Uh, finishing up on this here I don't know if you can see it there but it looks like it's you, you could probably see the black welt right here and then it probably disappears as it's going over here and I'm thinking to myself well why did that happen so what I did is I flipped it over and I'm looking at this front edge right here and you can see it's a lot wider here than it is right here it's a big difference there so what my assumption was, was that the pattern is correct in the way that I set it. You can see here, the way I originally set it, it's even all the way across. I didn't pull it tighter where I have like a one or two inch overlap on one side and it's shorter on the other side. It's all the way across, it's, it's consistent. But yet, we still have this wide area here and this narrow area here. So, I'm going to have to take this apart, pull it now to match this side. But I was assuming that whoever made the cover um, made it the same uh, width um, for both of the sides of the front here. So, here we go. I'm going to fix that. So you can see now that looks a lot better but what we have on the back side now it doesn't matter nobody will ever see it I guess but we know it's there is this extra material on this side here if the pattern was correct we wouldn't have that so that's what happens when we make assumptions that, uh, that we got a good pattern so now it looks real consistent all the way across what I'm going to do here this cardboard doesn't fit very well either. I have overlap in these corners here, but it's way short on the end, bottom ends here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark this area here, maybe down here, maybe up here. I guess I'm going to do the corners, upper corners here, where it at least touches the frame so 
So I'm going to glue this up. So I was just trying to confirm here, but because there's a left and right back seat, uh, they're not symmetrical. So you can see there's extra cardboard on this side and not enough on this side here. I checked to see if there was a left and right cardboard, but they're both cut out the same. So that's what you get with the kit, I guess. You know, just because it's made in the UK doesn't mean it's perfect. Just like things here in the US, I guess, whoever manufactures something, they never installed this on a seat frame before, I guess. They would have seen that. One thing I always do for my customers is give them more than what they think that they're getting. So this is the what the kit provides. I think that, I don't know if this is still from the customer. It'd be even worse if it was not from the kit because then it would just be the bare cardboard on the back. So what I do regardless is I'm going to I use the best foam available. It's a nice high density with a, this bulletproof backing. It's not the super cheap stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a foam back on here for him. If I hadn't have put this foam back on here, we might have had some bagginess in our cover here. But because I put the foam there, that'll give it a more plush look as a finished product. So the quality will look much better. There's a couple different ways of it slipping a seat cover, cover over the seat. One way most people might think about doing is just slipping it over like you put on your socks. And that's what I did here. It's a little bit more of a struggle to do it that way. So you can see here, it's not down all the way yet. And I'm still trying to get it down. I am going to mark this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew this edge. That way it looks like a finished edge. 
and then the other thing that happened while I was pulling down on that was it stressed the material right here and tore it so that's a, another quick little repair I'll be doing at the same time the, the vinyl is pretty thin the extra material that was this long I sold it and I marked it and then I sewed it under so that way when we're done this is going to be that nice that nice clean edge there across the back kind of like that you know it's hard to see but anyway the other way of putting on a seat cover is to turn the top third inside out like this and then slip that over the top and you can see that right away instead of the struggle you're already set at the top So the top's already set without the struggle. I think I already said that. Okay, so now what you do is no, uh, keep in mind that the, the welt is facing the same direction all the time. Just go ahead and slip it over. See how easy that is? No struggle. Don't make work harder for yourself. Oh, look at that. You saw it live. Okay, I gotta take it apart again. This material is like really thin. And that didn't take much, you know. Usually what they'll do also is there'll be some kind of a reinforcement on the end. But there's no reinforcement here. They just sort it right to the end. Not only that, but look at the, the pattern there. There's no the pattern's a little bit too narrow right there. You can see it on the other side. See, I, I'm not doing anything to it, but it's it's pulling too hard already. Okay, so back to the sewing machine. Here we go for round three. I sewed it up. It's looking pretty ragged on the ends here from all the splits, but what can you do? Sometimes you gotta do those kind of repairs sometimes it happens so turn the inside out the top third and there you go once again this is not a replay this is actual what's going on After slipping the cover on for the third time, okay, now I just discovered that the carpet here split. So it's got to come off again, put it under the sewing machine again. Which you know, every time I put it under the sewing machine, it makes this tighter and tighter. It's because I have to take it in a little bit further now. So I don't know why everything's just like falling apart. So usually, usually if the carpet falls apart like that, that means that it was sewn too close to the edge of the carpet. So it just 
frays the end and falls apart. So what I did is made sure that you go in at least that 3 8 inch, half inch in from the edge of the carpet. Here we go, round number four. Be never so careful this time. So good. Check the welds, make sure they're all turned in the same direction. A lot of guys don't go through this process. So the back is still a little baggy. That's even with me putting some extra foam in there. That means that the pattern is too big. It's too much material. Let's go ahead and pull down on the bottom of the insert. Hope we don't tear something. Set that side. Pull the other side. Set it. Set the center. So you can see where I added on that extra material so that way I can glue it and wrap it around the back. So remember, we're going to take away the foam from where it doesn't belong. So we're not going to glue the foam to the frame. We want to glue the vinyl to the frame. Go ahead and set the center. Now I'll set the back here. I can't really lift up that carpet. So I'm just going to shoot the glue inside. We still have some wrinkles here on this insert. I mean, these would probably come out on a hot sunny day if it's out in the sun, but I don't want to give it to my customer like this. So I'm going to go ahead and put some heat to it. Well, I guess I'm finished with the backrest. So, got one side done. So I'll just do the same to the other seat. And I won't bore you guys with that one either. So, on to the next one. So I got one of the seats done. Uh, just repeat the process for the other side, for the driver's seat. So, if you guys uh, learned something new, or if you appreciate what you saw here, please do me a favor and hit the like button. And also, subscribe to my new channel. It'll help me grow my new channel. And um, I got a lot more of these videos coming, as I'm a working upholstery shop. And I have something different that I do every day. And this just happened to be the 65 MG, uh, MGB seat. It's a seat kit that was purchased uh, and brought in from the UK. I just did the labor install. So uh, that was it for today. Thank you very much and we'll see you next time. See ya.